Hey everybody, it's your girl Lisa and your lawful Lisa. Um, if you're new here, thank you for stopping by. If you already subscribed, hello my friend. Um, I'm just gonna roll right into this video about <clears throat> the girl talk. Um so the three topics I got, uh, because I did like a um I add a question and a response on Instagram. I got three topics back. Bad friends, first heartbreak, how I overcame, and healing. And I honestly feel like all three of these like low-key tie in together. Um as far as with bad friends, I don't think I've ever had a bad friend unless I was a bad friend. I don't know. But as far as actual bad friend, I don't think I ever had a bad friend. More so like I chose to hang around the wrong crowd or the wrong type of people. Because when I was younger, you know, I, I, I was into the hood shit. Like, I liked, I liked hood niggas. I liked being in the hood. I liked skipping school to smoke weed. I, I liked all that. Like, that, that, that was fun for me. But um, those were my decisions to hang around those people. You feel me? So I don't really feel like I ever had a bad friend. Um, so I really don't know what much advice a girl talk I could give on bad friends. But um it's just like your first heartbreak or your first person doing you wrong or cheating on you if they are not it's so icky saying this stuff like okay it's so hard talking about your first heartbreak because it's it could be different things for me it's not even always a um a relationship is heartbreak but um I know that's probably what they were asking about relationship-wise, so I'll stick to that. But back to bad friends, um, um, I honestly feel like you're going to go through... Friends are forever, you feel me? Friends never end. <laughs> that's what they're supposed to be. Um, lot, a lot of times, people make uh, acquaintance or associates closer than they should be, and that's how you experience, I guess, bad friends. But when, if I go through a situation like that, like, I don't, I don't, I wouldn't consider them a bad friend. It was more so like an associate that I made that I let in too close. So, that's what I consider a bad friend. Yeah, that's what we'll go with. A bad friend is just an associate or acquaintance you let too close. So, I feel like a lot of things in life now, I didn't used to think like this, but now, um, I feel like a lot of things in life is um <clears throat> you you have to look at yourself like what did i do to get to this situation what did i do to get to this point you feel me because i spent so much of my life blaming other people so now i feel like i'm not saying i blame myself but i look instead of trying to figure out what they did or why they did what they did i look into myself like what role did i play in this like come on what did you come on what what did what, what role are you playing this it it, it they fucked up for what they did but what did you do you feel me that's how i look with everything so like did you ignore signs did you um move too fast with this friend like um i just watched these two girls on um they I, they both strippers flex the reaper and pretty boy xo yeah they like the internet i'm gonna say like the pressured them into being friends so when they they really probably would have been great associates like great internet friends and but because they lived in the same area that um you know how people like tell youtubers like oh you and you should you you and you should link up you and you should do a collab oh and when they do it oh we want more so it kind of was like they were pressured in in like trying to build their platform and things they were kind of pressured into being friends so that was a mistake on their behalf of allowing an associate to be closer you know what i'm saying like you feel what i'm saying like i hope y'all get what i'm saying so that's the only thing I could feel or say about bad friends. And I say, take it with a grain of salt. Like, friends, associates come and go. Like, friend, associates come and go. Like, they come and go. And I've never been the type of person to be, I'm going to spend a lot. In seventh grade, that was the last time I remember me trying to um, make friends, doing stuff to make people accept me. It's like, nowadays, either we click or we don't. Either we click or don't. Like, it's people I click with and we become very close or they actually become an actual friend or things like that. But when there's people like me, like, 
All right, we click, but we only click with this. All right, we ain't got shells in common, man. Don't call me for shells. <laughs> like, it's people like that. Like, it's it's people like that. And then, like, you know, you come across, like, your friends that you go through ups and downs with, roller coasters with. They become your family, you know? So, it's just all of, like, you. Just weeding through what is what. So, that's what all I got to say about bad friends. Um, and then, first heartbreak and how I overcame, man. My first heartbreak... Um, I wouldn't even, I didn't even deal with it as a heartbreak. Like, my feelings were hurt. I my feelings was hurt, if that's what you consider a heartbreak. I don't think I, um, my first, I don't I haven't. I wouldn't even, my feelings was just hurt. I really, at first I was going to say, like, he was my first heartbreak, but my feelings was just hurt. I I, I was disappointed. Uh, I didn't even, I don't even understand that. <laughs> well, I, how I got over my feelings being hurt, basically, I didn't. For a long time, I did not get over my feelings being hurt and the things I went through. Because I went through a lot with the dude that I'm thinking of, what I could think of, what could possibly relate for me for a heartbreak. Um, he was mentally abusive, physically abusive, um, manipulative, uh, manipulative, uh, everything, a, a nightmare boyfriend could be with him, pretty much. But it was, even then, I, like, it, it was more so like, I was disappointed, because I, I put him on this pedestal of where we could go and what we could be together instead of taking him for what he was. The first time he cheated on me, I should have left him alone. It wasn't even, he didn't even cheat on me. A, a, like, I, well, it was cheating, Nick. I don't know what he did with her, but the girl commented on his wall, like, when you come back over. I, I should have left him alone then. Like, especially with where my mask that was. And I was, I was, I wanted to be in love. I wanted to be a high school sweetheart. I wanted to, back then, like, I was 16, 17 when I started at him. I really can't remember. And I wanted us to be now. Me, 25, him, almost 30. And us, we've been together for this. I wanted that. That's what I wanted. So, I thought like, okay, all he did was go to her house. He ain't nothing, ain't nothing, ain't nothing. All he did was go to her house. Like, I, I was stupid. Like, I was one of them. I was one of them. Yeah, that was me. But, um, yeah, basically, I, shit. When, when things got too much for me, when it was overwhelming, when it was overwhelming for me, when, like, I realized, like, I missed, like, I missed out on my whole senior year, like, I was spent, when I realized, like, I spent my whole senior year, like, in class and on lunch, I wouldn't even hang with my friends for real senior year, I was on lunchtime, when lunchtime would come, I would go get my food, go to the surgery and get on the phone with him, because he was out of school, <clears throat> so I would go get my lunch, go to the surge, sit at a bitch, and sit on the phone with him. My whole, my whole, my whole lunch hour. And then when I would get out, get off out of school, he would either pick me up or I would get on the bus and go straight home. Either he was coming to my house to pick me up or he picked me up from school. Like, I, I wasted so much time trying to force something. So, it's like, I hurt my own feelings in a way. Um, and I really wouldn't even say he broke my heart. Um... He more so fucked my head up more than broke my heart. He fucked my head up. He ain't, he ain't break my heart. He fucked my head up. Shit. Um, cause baby, I like the next topic is healing. Cause baby, I just started healing from that, and that happened like 2015, 16. <laughs> That's this 2015, 16. That's that. Around the area when my, I can't remember if it was like the end of the 2015 or beginning of 2016, I cannot remember. But that's around like the time where like I was done with him and your girl had a whole face. <laughs> like I didn't even think twice about my feelings being hurt. It was I my baby, I was fucked up. <laughs> like mentally, I was a fucked up person, and I just like and I didn't even realize that. I was fucked up. I just, like, went with the flow. Like, I didn't even realize that I was damaged. I didn't even realize that until now. And I, well, like, I was 24 when I realized I had some issues I needed to address. <laughs> oh, that's when I realized I had some issues I needed to address. Um, 
And I would say, as far as healing, that's the first that's the first step of healing is realizing that you have a problem when you got some issues you need to address. That For me, that would be the first step in you healing the process. The process starting is you realizing that you got a problem. Um, now, um, I don't think I am completely healed. I don't think I am a, ooh, a superior being or nothing like that. I just feel like I'm from from last year to this year I'm completely a better I'm a better person than I was last year and I see I, I really don't, I don't care what people around me think or people around me see I, I like me thinking like the memories on Facebook is what helped me keep track of my my freaking growth because the statuses I used to make now compared to where my mental state is now whoo child the ghetto <laughs> like whoo <laughs> And so, shout out to Facebook for the memories. Thank you. Because you, 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 every day you remind me of this growth and this path I'm on and why I'm on it. But, um, yeah. And now I guess that would be another part of healing. Like, don't look for approval from people around you to say, like, oh, I see the growth in you. I see you growing. Or, you know, who you aspire to be. You know, what woman you want to be. What man you want to be. You, you know all that. Like, let me not even say man, because it's girl talk. So you know what woman you want to be. Um, she rude. You know what woman you want to be and where you want to go in life. So don't look for people around you to say, oh, I see growth in you, girl. You see it. You know where you want to go. You know where you was yesterday. You know where you were today. Um, and then I would say um, for healing... I'm trying to think because, baby, I'm not, like, 100% there because I still, you know, we fall down, but we get up, you know, <laughs> you know? So, it's like, I don't want to portray to be this perfect person when I'm human and I go, you know, I go through ups and downs, you know, <laughs> all that. But as far as... um. Well, I'm at now. I just feel like I'm way better than what I used to be, so <laughs> I'm cool with that. But um, also, I would like this is about to be fucked up to say, but be by yourself. Cut your friends off. Not cut them off, but distance yourself from your friends, your mom, everybody. And I think everybody. The quarantine, low key. It's a good thing for people who want to heal or want to grow or do things for yourself, uh, want to change themselves. Um, be by yourself. Figure out who you are and figure out what you like. That's another step to healing. Find things um, to help you get through. Find things that you like doing. You, that That's another part of healing is being one with yourself learning how to be by yourself and like being by yourself and being by yourself is honestly not that scary because um while well, i was sick I, at first the first couple of days i was scared to be by myself like yeah i'm gonna be bored i'm gonna be in my thoughts thinking and, and i was in my thoughts thinking but it was a good thing i was in my thoughts th thoughts thinking i figured out so much about myself like i just realized that i hate small talk i didn't know that <laughs> i've never I've, I've known myself for 25 years and I just realized at 25 that I hate small talk and it bothers the fuck out of me. Like, if you don't get to the fucking point, if you ain't talking about no money, if you ain't coming with no business plan, if you ain't telling me about no book, if we not, you know, cracking jokes, you know, we not in that predicament yet. And like, like, I, hey, how are you? What's up? What you doing? Okay, see you later. That's cool. But, oh, how's the dogs? Oh, I think I want to do my nails pink. I'll talk to you later. Because unless you're going to say, how your dog doing? Okay, well, I just got a dog and I was curious. Like, if it's not an actual conversation with some substance to it, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't want it. I don't want it. I don't want it. I don't. I don't, want it. I don't. <laughs> and I didn't know that until now. So be by yourself, figure I figure you out. So what made me realize that I didn't like small talk, talk to my mama. And for a long time, I'm like, damn, do I not like my mama? Yeah, damn, I thought I got through this. Like, I thought I, you know, accepted this and forgave her and forgave myself for doing what I, whatever. I thought I got through this. And then 
So I had me like backtracking, like, damn, maybe I didn't, you know, going back through my old, you know, stuff. And then they hit me. It's because your mom predominantly small talk. That's the issue. It's not that you don't like her. You don't like her conversation she's trying to have with you. <laughs> so, I told her that. And basically, she was like, okay, well, we ain't got small talk no more. We walked the band. And that was it. She ain't get mad at me for saying it. She ain't argue with me for saying it. She ain't make me feel bad for feeling like that. None of that. Because she knows that I'm trying to figure out myself and I'm trying to grow and I'm trying to work better on communicating. So, she knows this. So, if you don't have... If, if you are around people... And they're not contributing to your health, your 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 healing or your growth. If like you telling them stuff that's like a trigger, or you telling them stuff that's um about you that they didn't know and you didn't know, and they're doing it like this is bothering me. I don't like that, and you're doing it, and I didn't know that this is what I didn't like about it. And they don't like accept it or you know come to some type of negotiation or agreement with you about it. Get them the fuck out the way. Because we all about elevation, growth. Like, um, another thing um, with healing, realize that you are better than situations. A lot of people be like, you think you better? You ain't better than nobody. I'm better than the situation, baby. Because if I'm better than the situation, I'm like the situation. And ain't no way in hell I'm like that, baby. I'm better than that. I'm better, baby. <laughs> I don't think I'm better than anyone. Like, I don't think I'm superior to anyone. Let's not, let's not misconstrue that. Let's not get that fucked up. I don't think I'm better than anybody. But I do think I'm better than the situation. So for a long time, like I said, I was one of the people that was like, nobody should think they better, man. Who up the band and all that. But it's this lady I follow on Instagram. Her name is Ajna Sarah. Um, it's the Hilla Place Dynasty. That's her, her, the page or whatever. And it was like maybe a year ago that she made, um... Uh, Instagram live I used to watch her live and you know because she would give like motivation and to keep going to keep going on your path and give more insights and invite you to try different things to get where you want to go and stuff so if you are looking to heal I would definitely suggest her because she is so blunt so honest so <laughs> so transparent like I would suggest her the healing place dynasty if you're looking to heal the healing place dynasty go check her out but, um, yes, her, she was just like, she said, she the one who made me think, because she the one who said that, like, if you ain't better than, if you ain't better than that, you mean you are them. And I had to think, like, I had to pause and think, baby, I'm not that, so yes, I am better. Uh-huh. Yeah. I am. You can call it what you want. Yeah, I'm better. <laughs> yeah. Realize that you are better than situations, like. You're better than the lying. You're better than the cheating. You're better than um, arguing. You're better than lashing out. You're better than letting your emotions control you. You're better than. Re realize you are better than. Realize you are better than. And I think that's a good note to leave. Girl, talk off that. Realize you're better than. About all that. You're better than bad friends. You're better than that heartbreak you're dealing with. You be you better than your past. So it's time to look forward. We healing. I think that's a good note right there with the end off on. So we're going to end right there. <laughs> and that's it. Make sure you give me a thumbs up. All the YouTube stuff I said at the beginning of the video. Video. All the stuff I said at the beginning of the video. Make sure you do that stuff now if you have not done it then. And, and I will see you later. Mm -hmm.